So in our last video doing this shape-based composition, we just got it started. We found our reference image, and we started to build shape tools on top of it. Right. Now this is what we call basic shapes, and you want to start with the largest, simplest shapes first, just like if you were cutting it out of paper, and then you're going to layer more and more complex shapes on top. The problem is, as you start layering up, it's hard to see what's underneath. So there's a few ways we'll deal with that that I'll show you. But first, let's just keep layering. So I'm going to use another shape tool. And just because this is a very kind of organic thing, I'm going to do um, another ellipse. Right? It's going to create automatically a new layer. And then if I hit Command-T and Warp, I can immediately kind of shape it where I want even kind of pull it to where I want. Hit return, hit command T again. I can move it that way just by clicking on the inside and I can warp it more. And someone was asking the difference between, Jack was asking the difference between Photoshop pixel-based images, raster images, and vector images. Well, notice as I'm warping it, it is creating these little white squares, and these are called anchors. And the shape tool is, the shape tools in Photoshop are vector tools because they're creating these shapes with perfectly clean vectors that have nothing to do with the pixels. Right. And we want to keep them that way if at all possible. Now, am I trying to get an exact cutout? Not necessarily. But I'm showing you some of the problems that can happen with shape tools. I can't just erase from them, right, without first rasterizing them. So if I get to a problem where, oh, that's really crazy there, and I hit return, I don't want it to be all crazy there. The answer isn't, okay, rasterize it so that it's pixel-based and then, a, then cut away from it. See what happened. <laughs> it's the wrong layer. There it is. Rasterize it, and so it's pixel based, and then cut away from it. That's not the answer, because the problem with that is then the shape layer is not a shape layer anymore, and it is just a bunch of pixels. So I want to keep it, and that's your requirement for this one. Keep it as a shape layer. So I'm going back in my history until it's still a shape layer. And if you need to smooth it out, you simply do that by using another shape. Right. And hit Command-T and transform it and kind of put it on there. And I can distort. Distort's a great one if you want to keep sharp angles. And I can warp if I don't want to keep sharp angles. And this is just like using Illustrator. You can layer up multiple vectors on top of each other so that even though they're individual shapes when they're together they'll look like one shape okay so as i'm building up let's see if i can get a really big one here what if i don't want to start with just a regular shape tool you know like another rectangle so there's nothing wrong with them I could start by duplicating ones I've already made. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to do one that has hard edges here, and then I'm going to warp out this side and curve it. And you'll find that artists often have little kind of signature shapes, their own set of signature shapes that they tend to use. You'll notice this probably in your own doodles. These things here, when you're in the warp tool, these are what are called bezier handles. They help you manipulate curves. And the next time we'll see those is in Illustrator with these anchors. So this is just giving you a taste for this stuff. But if I find a shape like this useful, let's give it a different color by double clicking and picking that shadow color. 
I need to get off of web colors to get more exact. There we go. Okay, now what I can do, I'll move it to the top. All right. Now what I can do is I can duplicate that. And how do we duplicate? The shortcut is Command J. So now I have a, a copy of the rounded rectangle. I can use the Move tool and move it around. And it's still a shape layer. And then I can take that and transform from that duplicate, which can be really useful. Especially if the artist I'm getting my composition from uses the same kind of forms over and over again. Now, because it's like cutting out paper, it doesn't matter um, what the shape is as long as the shape on top is the right shape. Does that make sense? But it does matter if it's covering up something I need later. So how do I kind of refine these as I go and make sure that they're not interfering with other things I need in the composition because I'm trying to get that kind of waste there. Well, I need a way to be able to kind of see through it. Does that make sense? So if I turn off my background layer, I've got all these shapes so far. But I need a way to have a plan, a blueprint over the top of everything. And we could do that by taking the opacity down on individual shapes we're using, right? You can make it somewhat transparent, but that's a pain because then I have to bring them all back up to 100%. So this is what I recommend. Take your background layer and duplicate it, Command J. And this is something we haven't done a lot of. I want you to take that background copy and I want you to move that up on top of everything. Now you can do that by just clicking and dragging, but we're gonna start to get a lot of shapes. So I'm gonna teach you shortcuts for moving layer position. And the easiest shortcut is command left bracket. They're right after, they're right uh, underneath command plus and command minus, which zoom in and out. And command zero, which fits it full on screen. Command left bracket moves the given layer down through your layers. Command right bracket moves it up. Why is that helpful? Well, as I'm cutting out shapes like this one, maybe that shape's going to look better sunken down below the others. As I'm cutting out shapes like this one, it might look better underneath another shape. As I'm defining shapes like these, maybe I want to change their color slightly. And when I do that, A lot of color options here. Maybe it makes sense for them to be higher or lower, you know, in the composition. All right. Now I have that background copy on top of everything. Now what I'm going to do is set that background copy at a lower opacity. I'm going to do about, oh, 40%, something like that. Maybe even less, maybe 30 so I can see the shapes I still need. Then I'm going to do something we haven't done, which is I'm going to lock it. So I don't accidentally do something to that. Right? It's just a guideline. Now when I make a shape tool underneath, so let's see, what do I need? Like this hand. The shape, tool, whoops, the shape tool is at 100% and I hit Command T. If I want to distort it, if I want to warp it, but I can see what it's covering up. So that can be quite helpful. return. And at any time I could just turn off 
that background copy that's on the top, that reference image, and see what the solid shapes are doing. Now that's going to be a very similar shape to this shape. So I might make a duplicate of it, Command-J, transform it, move it over, and shrink it, holding down Shift so the proportions are locked. But then I might need to distort it, scale it, make it my own. Now someone asked a very useful question that doesn't always come up because it depends on the shapes you need. But how do you make a triangle? So I've shown you rectangles, I've shown you ellipses, circles, and there's no triangle here. And that's because you have what's called the polygon tool. So let's see, I need, I'm gonna need some triangles, maybe, <laughs> somewhere. Um, so what you do is you go to the polygon shape tool and then up where it says sides, you type in three and that will give you a triangle shape, which then you can modify to any, any shape you need. But my, my main advice is don't get too detailed too soon. Use big, simple shapes first. So yes, he's got these triangles on his back. I could use Command-T, you know, warp these, rotate them, make them fit exactly. But it's not so much about the, the details, it's about getting across the basics of this composition. And then I can duplicate that triangle and shrink it down to another one. So we're trying to get more and more efficient as we work. So this is what I have so far. And then I might notice, oh, this shape is way off now. So I've got to re-warp that. So you can revisit past shapes and keep editing them to fit. And then I might need a triangle on his back here. But I need it to match this color. So how do I make it match that color? It's very simple. If I want to match the color exactly, I turn off the reference layer that's at the top, right? Then I double click on the color selector for that and I match that color. Same thing for these. Coloring is not difficult with vectors as long as you have them as separate shapes. Okay, now his purple trunks. I'm gonna go first with just a big oval. Let's first get the color right. Let's turn on our reference layer. And then let's push and pull this thing. rolling out dough. So I'm just trying to get that one big shape and then I can move it below the other layers with command left bracket. There we go. Okay, then I can try with the rectangle tool. You can do command T to free transform. You can also right click within it and use the free transform. But notice it doesn't just say free transform, it says free transform path. And that's because these are vectors, at least within Photoshop. They're not pixels, they're paths with anchors, which is a cool thing. And at any time, I can turn on that, that reference at the top to help guide me. And I can use Command Plus to zoom in. 